Hey guys, in today's video, I'm going to help you with price elasticity of demand, otherwise called PED. This is a very easy topic, but it's sometimes confused by many. Uh, we're going to start with the basics of a definition. It is your responsiveness of quantity demanded to a change in price. Well, what does that really mean? Um, let's try to make it a little easier so you can understand. I'm going to modify this definition. If I were to change responsiveness to reaction and quantity demanded to customers. Let's try reading that again. Your reaction of the reaction of customers when you change your price. Will your customers leave you when you raise your price or will they continue to buy from you? Will a small proportion leave you? Will a large proportion leave you? Let's figure it out. For us to figure it out, we need to know how to calculate the PED of our product. To calculate the PED, you need to figure out your percentage change in quantity demanded over your percentage change in price. Easiest way to do this is to find out your change in quantity demanded over your original quantity demanded multiplied by 100, you get the figure over there. Your change in price over your original price into 100, you get your figure over there. Now you will come up with a figure which will be in a ratio to 1, indicating if you change your price by 1%, by how many percent will customers leave you um, when the price is changed. Now, we're going to analyze this in the next section where we have values in between 0 and infinity. If your value is 0, if your PED value is 0, it indicates that if the price changes by 1%, 0 customers leave you which means you are perfectly inelastic. This is a theoretical concept and may not apply in real life. The diagram will look like this. So if you see the price axis, no matter what the price changes, zero quantity demanded changes, zero customers leave you. If you were in between zero and one, you will be considered inelastic, which means that if you raise your price by 1%, less than 1% of customers leave you. These are for products that are maybe necessities, which we will discuss in the next section. For an example of this is a cigarette. So no matter how much your prices rise, a smaller proportion of customers leave. The next category is unitary. Um, this again is a theoretical concept. If you change your price by 1%, an exact proportion of customers leave you of 1% which is why the di diagram looks like this. A 1% change here will lead to a 1% change here, or rather a proportionate change in your change of price. Um, if it is above one, it's considered elastic. Now, elastic goods are those with a lot of competition, so which means consumers will very easily switch to a different product if you raise your price. And that's why the curve will look like this. A small change in price here will lead to a, a fairly large change in quantity or a quantity above one. And the last of the categories are, is perfectly elastic, which has, which has an infinite value. Again, an infinite value indicates that it's a very theoretical concept there. So your curve will be perfectly horizontal here, which indicates um, an infinite change in customers when you change your price. Now, in understanding that, let's figure out what are the factors that make your product elastic or inelastic? What changes the elasticity of your product? Now, if your first factor is the number of closed substitutes, if your product has many substitutes, you are more likely to be elastic because people will switch to a different product if they see your prices rise. Now, the next one is the degree of necessity. If you have a product that has a high degree of necessity, maybe rice, maybe oil, maybe uh, bread. So if you change your price, people are unlikely to leave you. Maybe a few customers leave you. So render, it renders you inelastic. The next one is the proportion of income spent. If your product consumes a fairly small proportion of income spent, for example, Tic Tac, you'd probably not compare prices. You'd probably just take it off the counter and put it into your basket of goods. 
This is taken advantage at uh, supermarkets where they locate these low priced items at the point of sale where you wouldn't even consider price differences. You probably just pick it up and purchase the good. The next type is habitual or addictiveness. Now addictiveness can be products like cigarettes again you will continue to buy despite the price rises. Maybe a small proportion will leave you, but otherwise most of them will continue to buy. And of course, your time period, your last category. Here we're referring to a sense of urgency. Um, we'll look at this with the industry of airlines. They take advantage of this. If you were to purchase a ticket, an airline ticket, closer to your travel date, the price is likely to be really high. Whereas the same ticket with the same service purchased three months before, the price will be really low. This is the advantage taken by producers, especially in the airline industry, to exploit the sense of urgency that you have in order to maximize revenue. Right. Now, the last thing, price, elasticity of demand and total revenue. In order to maximize your revenue, you need to understand where you stand. Are you elastic or are you inelastic? Here you can determine if you should raise your price or if you should drop your price in order to maximize your revenue. Um, if your PED is inelastic, indicating it's between 0 and 1, you can increase price to increase total revenue, like the sale of cigarettes. You can increase the price, people will still continue to buy and then you will increase your total revenue. If your price elasticity of demand is elastic, drop your price. Because when you drop your price, you're more likely to be in an uh, industry with many substitutes. If you drop your price, you're going to attract everyone else from other companies, purchase, uh, consumers purchasing from other companies, and you can drag them to your company to purchase your product, which will then increase your total revenue. So that covers your price elasticity of demand. If you have any questions, drop me a comment below. And of course, if there's another topic that I can cover for you, do drop a comment below and I will do a video on it. Thank you. Thank you for watching. For more videos that will help you pass your exam, follow my YouTube channel. And of course, for updates, follow me on Instagram. It should appear right here. Let's make learning fun.